Hey, what's going on guys? I'm Primal Liquid and since FF10 HD is, well, only three days away for the Japanese release and still uh, three months away for the uh, English and American release, I basically decided that, you know, I'll do a nice little tips and tricks video. Uh, pretty much like six tips that a lot of people either don't know or never really thought about doing or maybe my way is just a little bit different than their way but uh, anyway let's get into it shall we so uh, first of all all this footage is recorded from an emulator so that's why the text is like a little distorted and that and why the quality is higher than uh, the regular ps2 version but lower than the hd remake version so there is that but uh, anyway yeah so the first uh, tip and trick that i've got for you guys is overdrive modes now, at the very start of the game, when you're fighting Sin Scales on the bridge uh, with Tidus and Orin, you can actually get three, well, technically four overdrive modes very early that can prove quite useful. Uh, but there's only one real important one, but I'll list them all anyway. So, the first one that you can get is Daredevil, and then there's Loner, Ally, and Slayer. Now, what you want to do if you want to get uh, Loner and Daredevil, you can get them with both characters pretty much at the same time. Uh, you want to attack your own characters on the very first battle, where there's only two Sin Scales. Uh, get one character into Yellow Half, <coughs> and then kill the other character. Now, when you've done that, keep pressing Triangle to defend, and after so many turns, I think it's around 300 turns or so for both uh, Overdrives. Uh, and then you simply revive the other character, kill the one that you just did it on, and repeat the process. And then, uh, well, that's those two. If you want Slayer, which I strongly suggest getting, uh, in the next battle, the one just after the two Sin Scales, you'll have three Sin Scales in front of you and two behind you. Now, the two behind you will respawn indefinitely. Uh, so you can just keep on and on and on killing them over and over and over. And these two battles are so good for these overdrive modes because the monsters don't actually attack you. So there you go, uh, that's that one. Uh, just don't kill the Sin Scales in front of you, otherwise you'll end up progressing uh, through to the next battle where you will start getting attacked. But uh, yeah, that's overdrive mode. Right, and now we're on to uh, the next one, which is free potions. Uh, basically, when you're on the ship with Riku, uh, and you gain the ability to dive off and go exploring, uh, if you speak to the person standing on the far left of the boat, he will give you free three potions and then what you want to do is dive into the water swim down through to the next screen and then swim back to the first screen get back on the ship and speak to the person again and it'll give you another three potions uh three three more potions and you can repeat this process up until you have uh, as many as you want pretty much Right, and now we're on to uh, Veilfer's second overdrive. Uh, Veilfer is the only Aeon in the game that can get more than one overdrive. And to get this, once you've completed the uh, Besaid Cloister of Trials, uh, and uh, basically once your whole uh, party leaves the village, uh, you'll be just outside the village after a cutscene, you want to go back into the village immediately, and then on your left enter the first building, which is the shop. You want to speak to the woman there, uh, she'll bring up like the shop menu, just back out, you don't have to buy anything. Uh, and she should mention that her dog dug up something uh, funny looking. Uh, now once she said that, you want to leave the shop, and you want to go up to the top right of the village, and in that building, the very top right one, uh, just have a conversation with the dog, and uh, the dog will give you Veilfer's second overdrive. And once again, Veilfer is the only Aeon in the game that can get a second overdrive. Now I suggest doing this at the very start of the game, because, uh, well, a little bit later it becomes uh, incredibly difficult to get back in the village. I'll just say that to avoid spoilers. Now, moving on to Sin Scale Grinding. Now, there's two ways to do this. You can do it with haste or you can do it without haste. It doesn't really matter which one you choose. Um, but basically, I choose to do it with haste because I have a turbo controller. So that means I can pretty much go with AFK and leave it going while I'm not here. Uh, now you can do it without haste, but it's a little more dangerous and you can die. Uh, if you want to do it with haste though, you have to get haste uh, while you've got Riku with you in the water. Um, just before you actually enter the sunken temple building ruin thing. Uh, basically, what you want to do is start off the battle, 
uh, cast haste on your three main characters. I use Tidus, Kimari, and Yuna. Um, if you don't do it with haste, then I suggest using Tidus, Walker, and Kimari. Uh, because that way you can actually kill all three uh, Sen Scales before they attack. Uh, if you do it with haste, though, you can do it with Yuna or Lulu, whoever you want to use. Uh, because with haste, you can actually attack them and kill them all before they respawn. Uh, it's like, uh, basically, you can kill them all and they'll respawn, which resets their attack possession on the ATB. So with haste, you can pretty much get where they won't ever attack you. So, once you've got haste on all characters, or if you don't have haste, fair enough, uh, basically you want to use cheer five times, which is the maximum it can stack, and what cheer does is basically raises your attack and defense. Uh, now, if you do have haste, then you're pretty much fine with any three characters. If you don't, then I suggest, like I said, uh, Tidus, Swalker, and Kimari, because with five cheers, all three of them, well, Tidus, Walker, and Kimari, will actually kill the Sin Scales in one hit. And they will respawn indefinitely. So you can, uh, if you have a turbo controller, you know, just uh, put something to hold X down, go do something else for a few hours, and come back to a lot of EXP, Gale, and Spheres. Uh, now, uh, once you've, uh, well, once you're basically happy with the levels, then simply kill off the giant fin. Uh, and then you'll basically be controlling Titus on Walker in a little battle underwater, kill that one, and that's when you get all your points. Now, the reason I suggest doing this with a turbo controller is so you can go AFK. If you don't have a turbo controller, then you have to sit there manually. And unless you do this for like a semi-long period of time, it's not really that effective, so to speak.
around about 60 to 70 percent of the way through the uh, story but with uh, this little tip you can actually pick it up about uh, 30 to 40 percent of the way through uh, basically, a character you get, Riku, starts very, very close to it. The only thing standing in the way is a locked sphere, a level 2 locked sphere. Uh, you can actually get a level 2 sphere node shortly after you get Riku. There's a boss in Mokalonia Woods called Sphere Morph, and once you beat him, he drops a level 2 sphere node. So, as long as you don't actually move Riku too far from his starting position, you can instantly unlock the level 2 node... And then with, I think it's around 5 or 6 levels, you can have Riku travel along the grid and getting uh, get Reflect that way. Now, the reason I don't really talk a lot about this one is because it's not all that useful. It's pretty much useful for one fight, really, until like Yuna can pick it up. But uh, yeah, guys, that's pretty much it for these tips and tricks. I hope they help you uh, in the HD collection if you plan on getting it. And if you're new around here... Hit that subscribe button, and as always guys, peace out.